that in mind, let's uh, kick off this morning's third public meeting for calendar year 2013. And uh, I'd ask that you join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first matter on this morning's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the January 10th meeting. And I believe, Commissioner Cawley, you are the editor of the minutes. I am, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, I've reviewed those minutes, and I move that we adopt them as submitted. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the, mo the minutes are approved as submitted. Uh, to begin our public meeting here this morning, I'd like to welcome to the podium um, Ms. Cheryl Walker-Davis. Good morning, Cheryl, and happy Valentine's. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Happy Valentine's Day and happy anniversary. Thank you. May it please this honorable commission on behalf of your various offices and bureaus, we present for your consideration and disposition the following agenda items commencing this morning with matters on behalf of the Bureau of Audits. On page one, we recommend the adoption of all items there appearing through and including the Wellsboro Electric Company recommendation pertaining to the generation supply service rates. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On page two of the public meeting agenda and the matter on behalf of the Director of Regulatory Operations with regard to the investigation of Pennsylvania's retail electricity market, we have the recommendation of the Office of Competitive Market Oversight into the end state of default service. This recommendation follows input by various stakeholders and comments to the Commission's tentative order and the recommendation of the Director of Regulatory Operations is referred to you. Noting your statement, Mr. Chairman, which is a joint statement with Vice Chairman Coleman as well as the statements of Commissioners Cawley and Whitmer. So move. Second. I'd like to recognize Vice Chairman for purposes of the joint statement, Vice Chairman Coleman. Thank you, Chairman. I'd ask that my statement be entered, our joint statement be entered into the record as though we read it in its entirety. Today the Commission acts, actions set the stage for the next phase in the development of the Pennsylvania retail electricity market. Two years after the expiration of the last of the electric generation rate caps, Pennsylvania has completed its transition to a fully restructured electricity market. More than 2 million Pennsylvania electricity customers representing almost 60% of total statewide customer load are actively participating in the competitive electricity marketplace. Our competitive market continues to steadily progress as the number of shopping customers has increased in each of the last four years with a 33% increase since January of 2012. From an economic development perspective, Pennsylvania has attracted more than 8,500 megawatts of new non-incumbent electricity generation since the onset of competition. The Commission has licensed more than 300 EGSs, many of whom have established operations in Pennsylvania and are actively marketing to Pennsylvania electric customers. In congratulating Pennsylvania on reaching its 2 million customer mark, the National Energy Marketers Association described Pennsylvania Pennsylvania's competitive market as a model of best practices. Even with this progress, we recognize there is room for improvement. In launching this investigation, the Commission recognized the need to assess the status of Pennsylvania's retail electric generation market and to explore changes to allow customers to more fully realize the benefits of competition. Our joint statement highlights the improvements that today's order directs. These improvements will help ensure the customers are making informed decisions about their electric supply service and will continue the progress of removing unreasonable barriers to a more robust and sustainable competitive electricity supply market. In taking today's actions, we reject the argument that our proposed model would harm customers by subjecting them to price volatility. Rather, a careful analysis of the energy futures market, as well as the amount of past PTC swings related to reconcili reconciliation, reconciliation uh, includes that our uh, proposed model will likely decrease the volatility felt by customers. Furthermore, in the more than four years since the existing statutory default service procurement standard became effective, domestic natural gas production, a primary driver in electricity pricing, and the deployment of demand response and energy efficiency measures have increased exponentially. 
These two factors have combined to drive much of the price volatility out of the electricity pricing. In short, the market forces that were the basis for the changes of the statutory default service language procurement standard in 2008 no longer exist. 2008 was a time of record high natural gas prices due to fears of decreased production due to hurricanes in the Gulf Coast, among other factors. This led to a corresponding increase in electricity pricing. These increases, coupled with the expiring long-term rate caps, increased the fear that upon the expiration of generation rate caps, there would be rate increases in excess of 100% of capped rates. However, those market forces are relics of the post-shale gas energy world. These facts clearly demonstrate that the Commission's proposal of transitioning customers that remain on default service to more market-based pricing will not harm those customers. Further, customers wanting price stability have every opportunity to purchase such a product from their competitive supplier. In closing, we'd like to thank our staff and in particular the Office of Competitive Market Oversights for their time and effort devoted to this matter. Their counsel has been indispensable and we are grateful for how they have balanced their responsibilities to both this proceeding and the regular duties. We also want to thank the numerous parties who participated in this investigation. We found their comments and testimony to be very informative and essential to the formulation of our decisions throughout this process. We hope that you will allow you will all continue to be active in the various proceedings and working groups that will follow from this investigation. To that end, we view today's actions as an important step in what will be an ongoing process for an even more robust and sustainable competitive electricity market in Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Vice Chairman, and thank you for your leadership on this issue. Now I'd like to recognize Commissioner Cauley for purposes of his statement. Commissioner Cauley. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I dissented on the tentative order, but I am going to support this order because I think on the whole it uh, makes improvements uh, that are needed. Uh, and we are, by the order, proposing a fundamental shift in the default supply portfolio away from a prescribed portfolio of long, medium, and short-term supplies to quarterly procurements of relatively short-term duration. The Commission has been moving in this direction for some time now in order to benefit both default service and shopping customers. However, merely changing the default service portfolio will not address the more fundamental problems of Pennsylvania's current default service model. Any true end state model must address directly the propensity of many electricity consumers not to make any decision at all regarding switching their energy supplier in the presence even of default service alternatives that are way below the price to compare. The situation will persist indefinitely even if competitive retail offerings are well below the utility's default service option regardless of whether or not this default service product is a long-term or a short-term product. But today we are taking steps to further resolve these, uh, these problems uh, with the goal of ultimately reaching a fully competitive market. In an effort to reach that goal, today we announced the commencement of a collaborative charged with tackling the issues around optimal models for a non-utility default service product. And the order acknowledges our legislative allowances, uh, or the, the, actually the statutory allowances for such a construct. Uh, I ask that the remainder of my statement be placed in the record as if I had read it in its entirety. I wish to compliment the ACMO staff and all those who have labored so hard to move us forward. Alas, we have a long ways to go. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Colley, and you are too to be commended for your leadership on this issue as well. Now it's my pleasure to uh, recognize Commissioner Whitmer for purposes of her statement. Commissioner Whitmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like my statement entered into the record as if I had read it in its entirety. <coughs> Earlier this week, the Commission publicly recognized the fact that over 2 million Pennsylvania customers are now participating in the retail electricity market. That's 2 million residential and business customers who have learned that shopping for electricity can save consumers money and provide them with innovative products and most importantly, without disrupting the electricity services they've come to rely upon from the utility. While achieving this milestone is significant, it's quite frankly not good enough. 
I believe there continues to be fundamental flaws in the way the current electric retail market is structured that prevents us from being able to take the next step for improvement without the significant actions we're proposing today. The basic problem I see impacting retail electric competition in Pennsylvania today is that we have two different and competing markets. On one hand, we have a retail market populated by electric generation suppliers offering any number of products to entice customers to purchase from them. They fight for the best contracts and offer services ranging from fixed prices to energy efficiency upgrades and frequent flyer miles. These companies drive down prices and innovate in order to survive. With over 300 licensed suppliers fighting for every customer in the Commonwealth, there is a vast array of products that suits almost everyone's needs. However, this product must compete against regulated default service. The electric distribution companies, as default service providers, have contracts regulated and approved by this commission. They're required by law to have a prudent mix of contracts, which in many cases contains products purchased months and sometimes years in advance of delivery. In addition, EDCs must forecast what they think the price of electricity will be and how many customers they will have in order to set prices quarterly. If they guess wrong and over-collect from ratepayers, they refund that money back to their customers, depressing the default service. What results is an outdated and inaccurate price to compare against which retail suppliers must compete. This has to change if we want to continue to foster a free market that creates opportunities for potential cost savings and more product innovation. I believe this is exactly what the General Assembly envisioned in 1996 with the passage of the Electricity Generation Customer Choice and Competition Act when they stated that this Commonwealth must begin the transition from regulation to greater competition in the electricity generation market to benefit all classes of customers and to protect the Commonwealth's ability to compete in the national and international marketplace for industry and jobs. These are exactly the types of goals and objectives our proposals seek to effectuate today. My fear is if default service is left unchanged over the long term, electric retail suppliers will choose not to compete in the Commonwealth to the detriment of all customers. Some suppliers may reduce their presence in Pennsylvania or not offer as innovative and varied selection as they do in other states. Even worse, suppliers may cease their Pennsylvania operations completely. Regardless, as regulators, our duty is to establish a framework that will best benefit our ratepayers, utilities, and retail suppliers. That's why I'm excited and encouraged by the action we take here today. The order before the Commission moves the Commonwealth forward toward truly realizing the benefits of retail electric competition both now and in the future. However, to unleash the true power of the retail market, we will need to work with the General Assembly and all interested parties to make it happen. The legislature has already shown a desire to see competitive forces control the cost of electricity generation in order to provide Pennsylvania consumers with the best bang for their electric through electric choice. I look forward to working with them and other stakeholders as we design and realize the vision for Pennsylvania's energy future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Whitmer, and you are to be commended for your statement and your leadership on this issue. I would simply add, um, again, we want to thank the Office of Competitive Market Oversight and all the stakeholders that participated in this process. You know, I think it was set up rather nicely in the statements. You know, we talked about economic development. Well, we're seeing those benefits of companies that have bunkered down and invested in this marketplace. We've seen since 2008 uh, market rules that have been designed that protect and enhance the experience of shopping for customers. We've also seen through our efforts an unbelievable investment in consumer education uh, with our very successful PA power switch or the hundreds of events that we've done throughout this Commonwealth to educate consumers. And then I think you, lastly, you look at the proper regulatory oversight of this industry with bonding requirements, certificates of insurance. And I know we've had a few cases here since 2008 where we've had to reprimand suppliers uh, for, for certain actions. And today represents a, a new day, a new dawn for customers. This is all about the customer and the customer experience. And I think
think what, what, what we see here in this RMI work product is something that the legislature, the governor, and the five members of this Public Utility Commission can take great pride in because it's only enhancing the customer experience. And I think that's something that, uh, to Commissioner Whitmer's earlier point, we want to keep that very robust here in Pennsylvania. So with that, um, I think Commissioner Gardner agrees with everything I just said in his statement. And um, again, I want to commend my colleagues. This was truly a great work effort. We have a lot of work ahead of us. We recognize that. But uh, to see us come together as an agency uh, to really get this right, I think we're, uh, you know, we don't get many pats on the back, and I'm going to give them out here this morning. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Gardner. Can I be associated with your statement? You absolutely can. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, recognizing there's no further discussion, there's certainly no objections here. Uh, the motion passes unanimously, noting the joint statement of the Vice Chairman and myself, as well as the statements of Commissioner Cawley and Commissioner Whitmer. Continuing with the presentation of agenda items and matters on behalf of the Office of Special Assistance, it is recommended <coughs> in omnibus fashion that the Commission adopt all matters appearing on page three, commencing with the recommendation in the complaint proceeding pertaining to Absolute Health Systems, LLC, and flowing through pages four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, through and including the interconnection agreement of the United Telephone, DBA CenturyLink, and AT&T Mobility. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the staff recommendations commencing with the recommendation of the application proceeding involving Colonial Energy on page 10 and continuing with the items on pages 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 through and including the application of Northeastern States, Inc., TA, and Trust Energy. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. At the top of page 19, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the staff recommendation with regard to the line extension application of the Pennsylvania American Water Company, noting the statement of Commissioner Whitmer. So moved. Second. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Whitmer for purposes of her statement. Commissioner Whitmer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'd like my statement entered into the record as if I'd read it in its entirety. Before us today is a proposed order in approving an application for a waterline extension in portions of Lancaster Township, Butler County, by Pennsylvania American. In this case, Pennsylvania American has applied to extend service to provide public water to Rex Energy. This application presents compelling economic and societal benefits of the waterline extension. Rex Energy will pay in excess of $600,000 in support of the extension, which will afford 30 residential customers the opportunity to economically tie into a safe public water supply and provide fire protection through the installation of fire hydrants where none currently exists. For its part, Pennsylvania American will begin receiving additional revenue from customers with a major portion of capital costs being borne by a company with ties to Pennsylvania's burgeoning natural resources industry. I have consistently applauded this type of proactive partnership that benefits multiple parties. Approval of this application will assist in providing additional construction jobs, a source of clean and potable water for customers, a reduction in truck, truck traffic as water is delivered via pipeline, enhanced fire protection, and a positive financial impact for Pennsylvania American. These benefits should be highlighted by this commission because they are exactly the types of win-win scenarios created by proper use of all of the Commonwealth's abundant natural resources. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Whitmer, and I agree, win-win, and hopefully some folk up in New York can follow our lead around this industry. Well, or maybe not. We can keep it all here. It's fine. <laughs> um, any further discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously, noting the statement of Commissioner Whitmer. And it is recommended that the Commission adopt the remaining items, the remaining staff recommendations on page 19 through and including the recommendation pertaining to the application of NMG Telecom, LLC. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. On behalf of the Law Bureau, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the staff proposals appearing on pages 20, commencing with the proceeding involving Certainty Tech Telecom LLC and continuing with all items 
through and including the Verizon North petition for a bona fide retail request deployment extension on page 21. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Turning now to matters presented on behalf of the Office of Administrative Law Judge, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the recommendations appearing on pages 22, commencing with ALJ Long's initial decision in the proceeding involving Georgiana Woodhall and Millie Galagaza versus Equitable Gas Company, continuing with the remaining items on page 22, as well as all three items appearing on page 23 through and including the UGI Utilities Inc. Electric Division petition to extend their current default service plan. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, that does conclude the presentation of regular agenda items. Turning now to the carry-in agenda, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the Act 129 statewide evaluator recommendation of the Bureau of Administration. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. With regard to the Office of Special Assistance, it is recommended that the Commission adopt the Pico Energy Company Electric Division recommendation appearing at the bottom of page one, as well as the recommendation with regard to PPL Electric Utilities Corporation phase two implementation. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. With regard to the Bureau of Technical Utility Services, there appears the recommendation with regard to the First Energy Company's revised default service plan consistent with the Commission's order entered on August 16th of last year, and there is the motion of Commissioner Cawley. I'd like to recognize Commissioner Cawley for purposes of his motion. Commissioner Cawley. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we have before us consideration of a joint petition for approval of the revised default service plan retail market enhancement programs of Metropolitan Edison Company, Pennsylvania Electric Company, Pennsylvania Power Company, and West Penn Power Company uh, filed on November 14th of last year. While the parties were able to resolve several changes uh, to reflect uh, the Commission's action on its uh, original default service plan, uh, issues related to the pricing structure of the opt-in aggregation program were unresolved. The companies proposed that purchasing electric generation suppliers provide a four-month fixed price offer that is 5% off the March 1st to May 31st, 2013 price to compare <laughs> for supply service commencing between June 1st of this year and June 30th uh, of this year. Participating electric generation suppliers would also provide an eight-month fixed price for the duration of the 12-month contract and reward customers who remain with the EGS under this program with a $50 rebate check if they remain with the assigned EGS for the first four months. Both the four-month and eighth-month prices would be required to be provided to the Commission by February 25th, 2013. Uh, that's this month, and be provided to customers in their marketing materials submitted to the company's uh, mail house by April 4th of 2013. Both the Retail Energy Supply Association and Washington Gas Energy Services expressed concerns about the pricing requirements of this proposed opt-in aggregation program, specifically RISA takes issue with requiring an EGS participant to provide a price fully eight months in advance of the delivery date without any reasonable ability to predict the level of enrollment that would be in effect at that later date. Uh, I believe these assertions have validity. It is also unreasonable uh, to, and unworkable to expect EGSs to provide an eight-month forward price to customers eight months in advance of delivery when there are no reasonable means of anticipating with any level of certainty customer lo participation levels. There's simply no means for EGSs to securely and responsibly hedge such a requirement. Instead, the eight-month price should be provided to the enrolled customer of an EGS at least 45 days prior to taking effect. Furthermore, these prices should be submitted to the Commission no later than 45 days before offers are extended to their customers. To the extent an EGS prefers to provide an eighth-month fixed price, <coughs> uh, they are certainly free to do so. 
Before I, I uh, move this uh, motion, uh, I wish to observe that our staffs were working on this, particularly this order and other ones, well past midnight last night. And I saw a, an email this morning where they picked it right up again where they were working with this order. Shelby Lytton <coughs> Kenny uh, uh, emailed my Eric Matheson at 4.56 this morning working on this order. Uh, I wish to recognize their efforts. Uh, our staff came through again on a last minute order that uh, was very complex. And, and I, I want to compliment you on it. I move that the Office of Special Assistance prepare an order consistent with this motion and that the named companies file compliance filing within 30 days. Second. I'd simply add uh, that I'd like to also recognize um, Tony Rometta and uh, Chris Brown for their work as well, as, as well as Brett Killian. You're right, Commissioner Colley, this was well into the, uh, the, the wee hours of this morning that we got this issue resolved, and there are two to be commended. Uh, any further discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Continuing with the presentation of agenda items on page three of the carry-in agenda, it is recommended that the Commission adopt on behalf of the Bureau of Technic Technical Utility Services the recommendation with regard to the petition for approval of Pico Energy Company's revised default service plan. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, that does conclude the presentation of agenda items.